Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Clairaut differential equation. It's a particular type of Lagrange differential equation, and it looks like this. Y equals xy prime plus e to the power y prime. Now, we have basically x multiplied by the first derivative of y plus a function of y prime. And that equals y. So we're going to differentiate both sides first. Let's do it. Now we have the product rule here, the derivative of x multiplied by y prime plus the derivative of y prime, which is y double prime, times x. That's the product rule. Plus, when you have e to the power f function, how do you differentiate it? By chain rule. Remember, you differentiate it. When you differentiate it, it becomes the same thing times the derivative of the inside, which is, uh, you know, the chain rule. So it's going to be e to the power y prime multiplied by the derivative of the exponent, which is y double prime. Make sense? So we differentiated both sides with respect to x. Now let's go ahead and simplify this because we have y prime on both sides. We can actually go ahead and cancel these out. And that gives us y double prime. We can factor it. x plus e to the y double prime. And this is equal to 0 because there's nothing left here. Okay, this product equals zero, so this gives us two results, either this one is zero or the other one. So y double prime equals zero. Let's start with that one because that one is a little easier. So, to solve this differential equation, we have to think about the derivative of what equals zero. And the answer is a constant. So y prime, whose derivative is y double prime, must be a constant, let's call that k. And then what about y? So the derivative of what equals a constant, you're basically integrating k here. So to find y, we just need to integrate k dx. And as you know, k dx is just kx plus a constant. But since we're going to use the constant at the end, well, we can still do it because there is no other function. It's just the whole thing. Yes, so this becomes kx plus c. So that will be the y value. And if you differentiate this twice, differentiate it once, you're going to get k. Differentiate it one more time, you're going to get 0. That's going to get you to y double prime. Make sense? So you can always check your work with integration. That's what's really cool about it. Integration is harder than differentiation because the rules don't always apply and you have to put it in a certain form. And some functions don't even have an elementary integral or anti derivative, I should say, right? Okay, so this is one of the solutions. y equals kx plus c, where k and c are constants. In other words, this is a linear function. So a linear function is a solution, right? Since we don't have any initial values or initial conditions, basically k and c are arbitrary constants. Make sense? I mean, k can even be zero so that a constant will also satisfy this equation. You can always plug it in and test it out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other solution, which is actually a little bit more interesting. So we get x plus e to the y prime equals 0. And from here, what can I do? I can isolate e to the y prime. And then now I'm thinking about this. Now, how can I solve this problem, right? y prime is in the exponent. Guess what? We can ln both sides. Let's go ahead and natural log both sides. And that's going to get rid of the E. So if I ln this and ln that, and you can bring this to the front. So this becomes Y prime times ln E, but ln E is equal to 1. Okay, so this becomes Y prime equals ln negative X. And don't worry about the negative number inside the parentheses, because you probably know if x is real, then it has to be greater than 0. But who said negative x cannot be greater than 0? So that's going to be our new, our new condition. Negative x needs to be greater than 0 in order for this to be well defined for real numbers. This means x must be negative. So this is only true if x is negative. Make sense? But guess what? This is not y. This is y prime. So we still have to find y. And we can do that by integrating both sides. Okay? So let's go ahead and do it. To find y, we're going to go ahead and integrate ln of negative x dx. And how do you integrate this? 
good question. First of all, let's get rid of the negative sign inside the LM because that's kind of, isn't that bugging you? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Substitution. Negative x, I'm going to call that t. So that x becomes negative t. Multiply both sides by negative 1. And then d both sides, dx equals negative 1 dt or negative dt. S since x and t are opposites, dx and dt are also opposites. It's not always true, but in this case, actually, yes, it's not true unless x and t are in the first powers. So we can go ahead and plug this in. Replace negative x with t, and so you're going to get l and t, and dx is going to be negative dt. But instead of writing the negative inside, I want to take that outside. Because what you can do is with integrals, if you have k times a function, you're trying to integrate it, you can always pull that k out. Okay? And that basically comes from the definition of uh, an integral which expresses actually the area under the curve. And with summation symbols, we can do the same thing. That's where this comes from. Anyway, so this is the integral we got. How do you integrate L and T? Good question, right? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I can use substitution, obviously. So we can call L and T equals something else. But let's go ahead and use integration by parts, which is also called I, B, P. Integration by parts. Here's how integration by parts works. You have an integral of like u dv, and it's equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Now, why does this work? It works because if you add these up and integrate or differentiate, you get the product rule. Make sense? That's why it works. So it co comes from the product rule, but it's just for integration. Now, why do we do this? Because sometimes you can't find an antiderivative easily for a function, but when you involve another function, then it becomes easier. So, what do you call u and what do you call dv? That's a good question if you're doing integration by parts. And the answer is, if something is easy to differentiate, call that u, and if something is easy to integrate, call that dv most of the time. There are some exceptions to this, but in this case, I wouldn't want to integrate ln t. I don't even know how to integrate it. That's why I'm using this method. So obviously, I wouldn't call it dv. I would call it u. And when you call something u, the rest is dv. Make sense? So that's kind of easier once you find u. So now, this is dv. And let's go ahead and use the rule. So integration of u dv gives us uv. So what is... What is du and what is v? If u, e, u is equal to ln t, du is going to be the derivative, which is 1 over t, dt, right? And then with dv equals dt, then we're just going to integrate both sides, and that's going to give us v equals t. Don't worry about the constants. We're going to put that at the end. So now we kind of need to put these together because it's uv minus, don't forget the minus sign, v du, okay? So we're going to multiply. This integral is going to equal. By the way, there's a minus sign, which I have to consider. So I'll put that in the front and then use my rule, u times v, which is t ln t, minus the integral of v du, which is t times 1 over t times dt. Awesome. The negative must stay on the outside. So I'm going to close the parentheses, cancel out the t's, and that gives us the following t ln t minus dt. And obviously, if you integrate dt, you're going to get t. And this is going to give me minus t, but with a minus sign, it's going to be a plus t. So that's going to be my integral. So the integral of ln negative x should be this, but let's go ahead and write it in terms of x. Since t is equal to negative x, negative t is going to be x ln negative x plus negative x, which is minus x, and then plus c at the very end. So that will be another solution to our original equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.